Hey everyone, it's Hydro Pump here. Today I'll be going over the peak of the beak tournament results. Uh, I would manage to get first place in this tournament. It was like a multi-day Swiss tournament, so there was seven rounds. I went six and one with uh, pure black wings, and uh, yeah, managed to win through top eight. Uh, so yeah, we'll just uh, jump into this, you know. FormatLibrary.com events page. Uh, very nice resource for anyone that just wants to check out decks that are doing well and stuff. Uh, so yeah, just to give a quick rundown, it was 85 players. Uh, again, it was seven rounds. Uh, and peak of the beak one, I there was eight rounds. Um, less players, but I guess they managed. They, they just thought that you know we didn't need the extra round because. It just based on the amount of players. Uh, so this one was seven, and so I made top four in the last one, and this one I won it. Uh, but I went X one in both, so won seven rounds in the first one and won six in this one. Uh, and yeah, so you can just check out a bunch of things. Here's the breakdown for top eight. Uh, so I call off the top eight. So some X twos made it, some did not. Uh, so that's kind of how it works. And it shows like cards that are, you know, top main deck cards, top side deck cards, and uh, deck representation and deck type. Um, this this one's kind of interesting, so we can take a look at this one. We had 16 Blackwing and 14 Veyu Turbo, uh, so a sturdy. Uh, and this is like Blackwing Pure or Hybrid, probably mostly Hybrid because that's been really popular recently. Uh, so we had 30 Blackwing decks, pretty much. Uh, so 30 out of 84, that's a, that's a good chunk. And we had 7 Zombie, 7 Frog Monarch, 5 Light Swarm, 4 Dragon Turbo, 3 Sabres, and, uh, ooh, Macro Monarch. I do not, do not like that. Stop, stay away from this deck. And then everything else is just kind of like Rogue. And, uh, and, oh, this uh, Frog OTK deck made top 8, so that's pretty cool. It's only one played. Uh, so, yeah. And then, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff to check out here. And there's a, a bunch of deck lists here. They show a top 12, top 12 list. Uh, I guess because a lot of people made X2. Wait, I don't think, uh, did a Frog deck? Oh, I guess the Frog deck did not make top 8. Well, he was X2, so... Uh, he was pretty close. As close as you can get. Anyways, uh, the decks that made top 8 was Light Sworn, uh, Pure Blackwing with Gia, uh, and then Raikoko. He was, uh, he's a latest team member for my team, Ring of Destruction, Rod. Rod, Rod. And Kapachi's also, he made, uh, he made top 12 as well. Uh, with X Sabers of all things, so that's pretty interesting. And he is also a new member of Rod, so uh, welcome to the squad. Uh, but yeah, I guess yeah. Top eight was Light Sworn, Pure Blackwing, Diva Hero Beat. That's why I like to call it. And then we have another Diva Hero Beat. So that was uh, the top eight decks, and then we have a uh, hybrid Blackwing deck here. And then Cam, my teammate on Rod, he. Entered with Dragon Turbo and made top four, so he just took uh, my list and Pro Storm's list from Ribbit Three, and he got pretty far with it. So that's pretty nice to uh, see someone using the deck and kicking kicking butt with it. And then I uh, near on Veyu Turbo made it to the finals against me, and uh, and I won with Pure Blackwing. So and you can see the breakdown here as well. Uh, so yeah, we're just gonna jump into the list here, and then I'm gonna have a uh, replay analysis of like all my matches um, later on. I'm gonna have that video up soon, so you guys can check that out as well. Just to see uh, the replays and things I think uh, throughout the matches. Uh, anyways, just to do the get through the deck profile. So the the monster lineups the same. It's, this is pretty similar list to why I've uh, top, made top 4 with in the last term. I just changed a couple things. Uh, so all the Blackwings, 3 Blizzard, 3 Bora, 
Bora just gets a lot of disrespect. Um, you know, he's kind of like he's it's like a necessity. I feel like you you just have to play Bora just as a name. Uh, he works with Black Rowan. He's just something else you can summon other than Shura and Soroku. He's just another big guy. Uh, that could be threatening. He has Pierce. He can swarm the field. Um, I guess he's not like the absolute best by himself, but he's also food for Blizzard so and Icarus attack. So it, the card just does a lot. It makes way for your bigger monsters because a lot of times I can just throw Boar out there before, like in the mirror match, before I summon like a Soroko. I'm not forced to summon Soroko into like, and then they Soroko reversal me. I can just throw Boar out there. They summon their Soroko, I summon my Soroko, then, you know, it's uh, not looking good for them. And, uh, so yeah, Bora, he does a lot for the deck. I, I love playing three of the card. It's, uh, it's uh, pretty solid overall. Three Blizzard, I, I guess, I think it's pretty staple in the deck. Some people play two. The only way I can see you cutting down these is if you squeeze Upstar Goblin in the list, which I tried before. Uh, upstart just didn't really feel the best in this deck because like there's a lot of games where it's like you just have to get that you can get that one burst push for game. It's not like an OTK deck, but there's definitely games where it's like I can put them really low on life, or I can just you know I c you can OTK. That's not the main reason. There's just like a lot of stuff you want to fit in this list. And I wanted a lot of defense overall, and I'm not really trying to. I mean, aside from like whirlwind dad i'm not really trying to turbo into um into the deck maybe if oppression you're playing oppression in the main deck like it's like a good time to you know, by the way i'm not playing oppression in the main or side this time but we'll get to that uh maybe that'll be a good card to turbo into that get oppression if it's like a special summon heavy format um like if the format changes some but let's have to see we have uh, the one Gale, of course, three Kalu, three Shura, three Soroko, and one Veyu. And the hybrid builds, they play three Veyu. Um, I said this before, but I just cannot imagine just opening like multiple Veyus without Greffer. Sure, throughout the game, like you will have like more free searches with Blizzard Whirlwind to get more Veyus, but I think it's overall consistency, uh, consistency like, I think one value is fine. Uh, and then we play Dark Arm Dragon cards, uh, pretty good, won me a couple games. We play a Lord of Darkness, uh, two Whirlwind, uh, also a really good card. Two Book of Moon, on the last list I played three, but I also wasn't main deck in balance because I, for I forgot to put it in my list, because I just just winged it and last minute. So I kind of made way for balance by cutting a Book of Moon and uh, cut something else as well. But two book, it's nice. It's, it's just a flexible card. You can top deck it. You can play it. Um, if you know if your opponent's going heavy on like trap stun or seven tools, for instance, post side, you know Book of Moon's nice there. It's just a nice flexible card. And it messes zombies up pretty good. And uh, I'll go into a Book of Moon a little bit in a second. Uh, Brain Con, it's kind of a staple. Heavy Storm, staple. MST, staple. And onto the traps. We play 14 traps, so a good amount. Uh, two Bonds Trap Hole. Uh, just really good against like the, the Mirror. Any kind of Mirror, Veyu, Pure, Hybrid. You just get their big monster out of the play. They go for their arm wing play, you just bounce, it's gone. Um, so yeah, really solid card. Compulse. Um, this was the second road, but I felt like two road was a little too clunky. Like, you just saw it a little too much, so I just went down to one. And like, one just threatens your opponent enough. Like, they saw the one at some point. You're not top decking road too much. In a situation where you wouldn't want to top deck it, so. Compulse is a little better off the top deck. Uh, a little more flexible, you just, you know, clear a synchro monster they bring out. Uh, it's nice against Arndwing. Because they go, like, in Veyu or Hybrid. 
They go Greffer, Ditch, um, bring out Armed Wing, Swing, he has Compulse it. Now it's like, it's, it was like, oh, what? It's almost like a two for one because you're just going to run over the Greffer most likely. So Compulse is just really solid there. And it's just better than DD Crow, which I'm not citing Crow. Compulse is just better because, like, sure, you can Crow from your hand. Uh, but Crow's only hitting one card, so if you Crow Veyu, Soroko's still sitting there for your opponent to send another Veyu at some point. Whereas Compulse, like, they go Veyu, Banish, Soroko, and Veyu. They summon Armway, you Compulse it, it's gone. It's same thing with E-Prison, just gets the monster out of play. You don't have to deal with, like, the other half. Um, oops. So yeah, it just gets the monster out of play. You don't have to play with. You don't have to worry about the other half. Like it's like a mediocre DD Crow kind of thing. Is this another way to get monster out of play? Um, and I guess I'll say it now. I didn't play Mirror Force. I see some people have been questioning me on Mirror Force because uh, I played three D person and no Mirror Force. Uh, but I feel like D person or Mirror Force is just kind of mediocre overall right now. Just with all this removal, like, you have Book of Moons, you have Bonds, you have Deep Prisons, Cabals, like, you have, like, the one-for-one -one removals, and you're just kind of, like, one-for-one -one your opponent the whole time, so you just, gotta, like, get that advantage. So, like, there's not a real, there's not a lot of times where your opponent just swarms the field and just kills you. And if they do swarm the field and try to kill you, they're most likely going to make Stardust Dragon, because they're not going to just, like, make two to three like higher monsters and just like swing like they're gonna have a some way to clear your board so i didn't really think mirror force is that great i had like a bad memory because i last year i played or it was a couple years now i played in a tournament with black wings and my opponent made like a big board with stars dragon and you know he just swung with everything if my if my mirror force was simply a D prison, I would have won the game, but I lost. So yeah, and it, you never really want to destroy anything, send things to the grave to get their effects. Like mirror forcing an armed wing doesn't really feel that good. Mirror forcing like anything in the mirror does not feel good, because like you mirror force Shura or Bora, you know it's just blizzard food. If you D prison it, um, it's gone. They can't really do anything with it. That came up a lot in like mirror situations where like they just didn't have anything to fuel Blizzard play or like their armed wing play because it just gets deep prison or bombs. Uh, so yeah, that was really interesting. Um, so those cards all work pretty well. Uh, I but on Capulse, I didn't really see it too often because it's like at one. Um, it was it was okay. It wasn't like insane. I was just kind of like there. So. Might be a flex spot in the future. But, you know, I didn't really play against like a lot of zombies or anything either, so it's probably better there. Book of Moon and Compulse are really good against zombies. Because, you know, you just get rid of their synchro play and it kind of falls apart from them after that. Uh, two Dust Tornado. Uh, some people, you know, question, like, why does Pure play Dust Tornado and, like, the hybrid build plays normal extermination? You know, like, extermination is just. That, the high redex is trying to go all gas, all in. Clear the back row so I can summon my guys. Which the pure build is also trying to do. But, you know, this deck's more built for back and forth interaction. And it's like, kind of win like, the mid game. Uh, it's more so built for like a longer game state. Um, so Dust Tornado just works better. It's, uh, you know, reactive. Like, you can just like, chain it. Uh, they go, you know, blind space, your back row, or right go pop your back row. You can chain Dust Tornado, set something else. And you can hit, like, Black Whirlwind with it. You can hit Future Fusion, so... It's just a nice, flexible card, and then, again, it's also clearing the way for you to summon your uh, big monsters. So, I guess the hybrid build, like, they don't really have a lot of back row. So if they set Bond's Trap Hole, you get a Dust Tornado, summon your Sirocco, pump, and you have a big monster. And they're probably going to take a lot of damage, so. 
Dust Tornado is just like really solid card. Uh, three across attack is kind of just staple. Sometimes you side it out, especially if you know the players like bringing in Starlight Road, which came up in the finals. I knew they were on Road, just but based on what I saw previously. So they just. I took these out, and the Roads were dead pretty much the rest of the match. Uh, Solemn Judgment, just staple, Road. Pretty good. Uh, a lot of Black Wings running around, so Roads is good against Icarus Attack. You can just be really aggressive. You can set a bunch of back row. Which the stack doesn't have to set a bunch of back row, but it can. Um, and then you can just be really aggressive with your monsters, like summon Soroko, summon Bora, Pump, you know, just swing in, be really aggressive, try to, you know, trigger this road, and then trap the shoot, really great card. Um, I was going to say something about Icarus Attack, I think. I don't know. It might come back to me. Um, alrighty, so onto the sideboard. I mixed it up a little bit. Oh yeah, the I was gonna say something about oppression. So I didn't main deck oppression. I didn't make it. Main, ugh, I did not main deck it last time either. Um, in the last tournament, I side decked it, but I did not main deck it. It's just not really good against, you know, the black wing decks at all. Oppression and. As you saw here on FL, almost like, you know, 30 decks out of 80 are Blackwing decks, so that's like almost half the field. Um, so half the field, like, Oppression is just going to be dead against. And I feel like game one, you should just beat, like, most decks anyways. Because, you know, it's Blackwing, so it's a good deck. And I have, like, a lot of defensive cards, you know. Flexible cards. Uh, it's not like real linear. You have Book of Moon to stop whatever. You have Capols, Balance, Deep Prisons. Uh, so I feel like I was just like solid all around to stop whatever my opponent's trying to do. And uh, I did not side deck it either. Just because I felt I felt weird. Just you know, I'm not gonna main deck it, but I'm gonna side it in against. The decks is good against, but then they're gonna have like a plan to stop oppression. Like a lot of decks, they get, like slam three dust tornado, they slam decree, uh, they slam just like a bunch of removal wind blasts. Like mainly, I don't like oppression because uh, like I played a bunch of like zombie matchups and they just they just hold the wind blast for the oppression, you know, and it's like really frustrating because you know when they're gonna wind blast it and it's gonna go on top of your deck and be dead. Whereas I might, I'd rather just have something like Book of Moon Capoles to, like, stop a play, their synchro play. Make them commit resources a little more, like, stop the mid-play, make things a little awkward for them. And then, you know, that Wind Blast isn't going to really do anything. So, it works good if there's, like, multiple, multiple back row, otherwise it's not going to matter too much. But I plan on having multiple back row. So, yeah, it just, it felt mediocre to side it in. And I didn't really like siding it in, in the last tournament at all, so... I'd rather just make room for other things. Um, and I guess, like, not saying, like, Oppression and a Mirror Force are always going to be not great, but it was just, I didn't want to run for this tournament. You know, it might be, like, a in your head, like, in the opponent's head kind of thing. Like, you know, they play against me, and then in a future tournament, say I'm on Black Wings again, and then. They uh they're like the look at my list. They're like, okay, so I'm your force. Let's, let's make a big board and swing, and then I'm your force. Uh, so it might just go tournament to tournament. We'll see. Uh, keep the opponent on the toes, you know. You know they make some crazy all-in play. I flip oppression. They're like, what? Game one. Uh, so yeah, cards can change at any time. This kind of depends what I think. I'm gonna be prepared against or like gonna be playing against. So yeah, that's what keeps the the meta interesting, you know. Anyways, I think that's most of the discussion on the main deck and just to talk like it's one more thing. D person, like I guess people have a it's a little bit more common now, but beforehand, like I don't know. Some point last year, a lot of people did not like really play prison and black wings decks too much. 
just because the, the consensus is like, oh, well, you have Kalut to beat over big monsters, or, you know, you're always going to be like a big monster. You're going to have Soroko and Shura with Kalut. But it's just really nice to clear monsters and then have like that Kalut for backup, or, and just Banshee monsters in general is just really strong. So, like, it, like, uh, relieves you from having to, like, always have Gale or Kalut. So, that's kind of nice. Okay. I think I rambled enough about the main deck. Let's go on to the side. Two Cyber Dragon. Uh, I talked about this with Pro Storm. Uh, Cyber Dragon. Uh, I think a big thing about the side is this, you know, Concentrated Light. So it's a really popular side card right now. So I'm some deck side in three. Uh, so, is this a you want pretty much, the, when you're building your side deck, you want to have an answer for your opponent's side deck. So, like, Frog Monarchs, like, you want to have an answer to pulling the rug, because everyone's siding, like, two or three of those. Because um, if you're deciding for, like, your opponent's main deck, you know, you're just going to get crushed by their side deck, probably. So, you have to keep in mind, you have to side for your opponent's side, for instance. So, it can be kind of complicated, but... Anyways, my... My game plan for the side was just have like monsters and ways to prevent me from just outright losing to orb. So I didn't. I think maybe someone summoned orb once or twice during the tournament, and it wasn't really a problem. So, anyway, cyber dragon just really nice against orb, and we were considering cutting the cyber dragon, but it's just a nice monster, big monster. It's good against you know diva decks, I guess, because. They just throw a Cataster out there, potentially. Probably gonna make Android, but uh, who knows. Uh, Car Trooper, maybe. Anyways, this is a big monster. Beats over Orb. That's the gist. Uh, two Dyna. Really nice against Frogs, in particular. That's what it was mainly for. Good against Quick Draw. And this is really nice, considering I'm, you know, Manic in two Book of Moon. We have the prisons here, so like it'd be kind of weird to have prisons against those decks, but like you get the idea. You have some defense to like help your Dyna. They can't just summon a junk warrior and just beat over it or something like that. Uh, so it's a it's a nice card, and again kills orb if it comes up. To snowman, this is really nice against like the beater deck. So like mirror, uh, it's nice against the mirror. It's nice against. Um, hero beat, which I don't know. It, just, it used to that hero beat matchup used to scare me a lot because they just like once they get the ball rolling, it's like really hard to stop them. They just, they just have a lot of ways to stop your normal summon. Uh, it can be kind of difficult because uh, they go they got Gemini Sparks, they got Hero Blast, and they're probably gonna have like Balanus Trap Hole and a bunch of different things. So, like Snowman, Snowman, he just like they. Oh, summon alias attack. Okay, pop the alias. Now they have to like burn a hero blast on snowman to get alias back, and then it's kind of like a two for one in an instance. Uh, it could just be if they don't have like the hero blast, it can be really hard for them to clear it. So it's just overall just like a nice monster, and again, it could pop orb if it comes up at all. So, and uh, it's really nice against the mirror because they just you know, jam a Shura into it, thinking it's like a set value or something like that. Then they lose their Shura. And it's just really nice to clear monsters. Two Thunder King. Um, this is a solid card. It's just it's nice against zombies. You can just kill the recruiters. Like zombie. Uh, goblin zombie and stuff like that. And kills orb. It's nice against, you know, Light Sworn. Potentially. Uh, it's nice against Dragon Turbo. That's mostly what it came in up against. Because it stopped... Uh, I think I played Cam early rounds. Like, round three. And I had Thunder King on the field. And he had to go, he had to go Future Fusion. And, like, not getting his White Stone effects. Because uh, Thunder King was just on the board, chilling. And, you know, can't summon Red Med. So it was nice there. Uh, so, yeah. It was uh, pretty solid. Uh, it's just... It just kind of came down to like Snowman's better in some matchups and Thunder King's better in some matchups, so that's uh nice to be flexible there. Uh, Mind Control, 
Uh, this is more so against like the hamster and Reiko heavy decks, because those can give you a problem. So I was just kind of deciding this for those. If your opponent goes like set Reiko and set back row, you know they can kind of get blown out if you have mind control. Um, you probably want to make sure you have like a Blizzard and Gale, one of those two, when you go for mind control, just in case. You know, it's a hamster, you can synchro with it or something like that. Uh, so it's an okay card. I don't think it really was insane. It might have came up once. Uh, this is a card people were really wondering about, Prohibition. Uh, Prohibition is uh, some Pro Storm technology he uh, told me about. Because I showed my deck list I was going to roll with for the tournament, and like the night before, he was like, yo, you should... I had uh, pulling the rugs on this, this spot initially, but he was like, yo, play Prohibition, you get just like... It's really nice, flexible card. I was like, okay, I'll try it. And uh, yeah, it was pretty nice. So you can call like, you know, Tree One Frog against the Frog decks. Um, you can call something against Dragon Turbo if it comes up, uh, which I drew against Dragon Turbo. Uh, came up against a Drill Warrior. My opponent went turn one Drill Warrior, and I prohibitioned the Drill Warrior so it couldn't come back. Um, and there's just various other things. Oh yeah, it's really nice against Hero Beat, because you just call Alias, and that deck literally just crumbles. You can't Gemini Spar, you can't Hero Blast, you, you, just, you lose all access to Alias, so. Yeah, that's a really nice, solid, flexible card. It could be like a really nice top deck. Say your opponent goes Gold Sark and something, you can Prohibition the turn before, they add it back. So it's uh, really nice. So, I think the most the most, like, the big giveaway from this deck is, like, you just have a lot of flexible cards. You're not, like, just locked into, like, certain things. Like, sure, I'm missing some blowout cards, like Oppression, Deck Dev, um, but overall, it's like, just, like, really solid against, like, all matchups, which is, a uh, and it's really good against, like, the, the Blackwing Mirrors, uh, which I know there's gonna be a lot of, so. Uh, two Skill Dream. This is kind of, like, the Deck Dev replacement, but it's just like really generic, nice card, and the big thing is it kills Orb as well. Whereas if you side like Light Mirror, like normally my last list, like I had two Light Mirror, three Rugs. Um, you could side side Dective. I had a side of Depression, so like all of those are like really targeted versus like one to two matchups where like most of my sideboards is like really generic. So Skill Drain is just nice against those effect decks like Quick Draw. Uh, you know, it's nice against Light Sworn so they're not getting their mills. It's, it could be okay against Fairy, because, like, you're not getting DD Warrior Lady to death. Like, sure, they're getting the Recruiters, which can be a little annoying, but uh, their Orb's dead if they side that. Uh, so it's just like a, a lot of matchups where you can side Drain. It's really nice against the Raikou Hamster decks, which is what I was mostly, like, worried about, like, because those decks are just really annoying at times. So yeah, Skill Drain, really nice generic card. Uh, two Traps done. This is uh, just to help get through back row again. Like, I'm main decking two Dust Tornado. It'd be kind of like, why don't you side the third Dust Tornado? It's just, you side this against the really tra trap-heavy decks. And uh, yeah, I sided it a couple times, and it was uh, solid. Uh, just like, you just one-for-one one trade with your opponent's back row that you otherwise wouldn't be able to deal with, so... It wasn't like insane, but it was uh, interesting to say the least. Alrighty, just to wrap up the list, because uh, we're getting to the end of it. Extra deck. I think it's about the standard. Some people may like play like Red Dragon or Thought Ruler, but you know, really, those don't come up very much. So I decided to I had a second Stardust in here because I was playing two road before, but you know, I took one out. Because you're never really going to make Stardust and then, you know, have Road. Uh, ideally. Uh, so I added Armory Arm. This is kind of like a weird card. It's like, why would you why would you add Armory Arm? Well, um, you know, if there's ever a world where I might control a Raikou or something like that, you know, you can go for a Blizzard play with Synchro, Blizzard, and Raikou. Just so you know. Give them back the Raikou. They attribute Raikou for Kai's, and then you're like, just feeling bad. You'd rather just take their monster and do something with it. 
Um, ideally, you'll be making something else, not armory arm, but who knows? This might be uh, good to make at some point. And armory arm, I think I had one game where it's like I had a really obscure field where I made armory arm. I don't think it was in the tournament. It was just like in a test match, or maybe yeah, I don't, I'm not sure. But armory arm came up just to put a lot of damage on board, just enough to like where you can't brand control me. It might have come up in this tournament. I have to see. I you know, played a bunch of matches with this deck. So it might have been this tournament. I think I think it was. I'm not sure. Anyways. Uh so yeah, that was mostly the list, mostly the thoughts. Um I was it's mostly built to beat the mirror. So that's kinda like and this deck beats like the other it beats the hybrid build really badly. Like it's just I played uh against Sam uh, he topped. I think he topped both. Yeah, he topped both beak of the peak of the beak tournaments. And I played him in Swiss once each, so I played him four times and I won four zero. Oh, not say so you're always going to win against the deck, but it's just really solid against that mirror, because you know they have dark graphers. The deck's a little clunky. Sure, they have no one extermination to pluck off your back row. Uh, but mostly, yeah, you have like waves of back row. Like you'll set a couple, they no more extermination. You know, clear board. Um, you make a backup play. You summon Blizzard, summon Sirocco. You push back. You set some more back row. And I don't think the deck really recovers from that initial push. Like they're just kind of hoping, they just hope to knock you down once, and then that's good enough. Whereas uh, I feel like this list is just really resilient. You know, if they make Greffer or Summon Armed Wing, s simply just summoning, summoning Shura, beat over Greffer, give A you, make Android, then their Armed Wing doesn't do anything. They can't beat Android, so this is uh, a really interesting concept. Um, and they're really light, uh, back row light, so like, Dust Rain is just really nice against them. Uh, I think I had like a couple times where it's like you snipe the one bombs trap hole and you're just you're just free to run. You can just go have a heyday with uh summon Sirocco pump, beat their arm wing. So really uh really cool concept here. Again, at face value it just looks like a simple, you know, pure pure black wing list, but um it was a decent amount of thought that went into it. Um again there's always changes you can make going into the future metagame and stuff with the because people are going to maybe start playing this list and there's going to be things that are good against this list and then you can kind of prepare for this deck uh, maybe people will stop playing hybrid as much because this is just a bad matchup for them or maybe they prepare in a different way who knows we're not with we can't tell the future but we can try uh anyways uh yeah so that's my deck profile for like first place peak of the beak tournament it was kind of like it's not as big as the ribbit tournaments those are usually like closing on 200 people usually so it's about half the size but uh nonetheless still got first so pretty cool uh out of yeah 85 players so. anyways uh and if you guys are just getting into the format you see this video you, see, you want to learn more how to play these tournaments I have a video here. I'll uh, tag it in the bottom. It says how to play retro Yu-Gi-Oh guide. I, I found it was pretty useful. It doesn't have that many views, so I was kind of surprised because it's kind of a long video. And then you know, there's people. Uh, the biggest thing, the best thing to do is just type, you know, edit some format and find videos that way. You can do like this week uh, filter. I always do that. Like, I want to see videos from this week see if there's anything I missed uh, so yeah that's, uh, there's some good tools out there if you're wanting to learn more about the format or you know start playing so anyways uh, thanks for watching everyone and I'll uh, catch you guys later